My name is Grzegorz Spiewak. I'm a head EOT consultant for Macmillan Central and Eastern Europe, and it's a great pleasure and, and true honor to be opening yet another uh, in the series of the spring webinars for uh, teachers of English as a foreign language. They are all hosted by Macmillan Central and Eastern Europe. And uh, today, uh, uh, as you've already seen, we have got um, a colleague from Slovakia, Martin Jelinek. Uh, Martin, you can wave again. <laughs> right. Like and before I, I, <laughs> before I uh, hand over to Martin, I just wanted you to uh, to meet him a, a bit more properly so as to speak. So uh, very briefly, uh, Martin, as you can see, is very experienced. You know, EFL experience obviously shows on a person's face. In his case, it's over 15 years as a teacher, teacher trainer, academic manager and educational consultant uh, in various countries in Europe and Central America. Um, as you can see from, you know, the the wrinkles on his face, so he's got a new haircut and new pair of glasses and all got all sorts of other bits and, and you know frills, but but still but still you know we, you can't hide that sort of record, can you? Um, uh, apart from from you know those achievements, uh, uh, Martin specializes in secondary and adult uh, language teaching. Uh, he loves uh, uh, um, learning innovation, communication, and presentation skills. Uh, and I hope you will be able to glimpse some of that uh, in his webinar today. Um, Martin runs his own EOFL business. Uh, he might perhaps be able to plug it uh, at, at some point during today. Uh, he's also a Cambridge uh, ESOL oral examiner. And uh, I am very happy to also uh, introduce him as a, a member of a thriving and expanding um, Macmillan Central and Eastern Europe teacher training team. So he is now, you know, an official family member. And today he's uh, sort of debuting <laughs> uh, in in this particular role. So he's a CEE webinar virgin, but only for a couple of more minutes, and uh, and very soon it's, it's going to be all over. So Martin, uh, so be, be soft on him. That's all I want to I want to say. And uh, uh, and now I'm going to just shut up and uh, and uh, let Martin continue. So uh, sir. Uh, the floor is yes. yours and good luck. Thank you very much. I mean, you can keep continue talking because I'm busy reading the comments. So thank you very much <laughs> for all the comments. Uh, thank you for all the countries that have um, participated so far. And guys, I'm going to be very honest with you, very open. I see the number 365. You can't see my armpits, but I'm sweating like heavily down here. <laughs> and uh, I'm very excited um, to have you all. Um, I'm very honored actually to become a part of uh, Macmillan teacher training uh, team and I'm very happy um, that Grzegorz have chosen me uh, to deliver this uh, webinar. Uh, to begin with, um, when I was asked to deliver a webinar on reading skills, I was like, yeah, sure, why not? You know, I am a bookworm, I love reading, I can't, you know, fall asleep without um, holding a book in my hand. However, uh, when I started actually doing research on reading and reading skills, I found out myself that um, isn't it possible to um, take a webinar myself for reading skills? Because to be honest, you know, I got com not confused, but there were so many techniques, so many methods, so many skinning and skipping and scamming and all of those words that um, I I studied once uh, when I was at the university, but um, I don't think that we bear in mind what actually uh, reading is and how we read. So just to begin with, I'm going to be also uh, reading your comments and uh, I will try to answer your question. And um, you can see hello from Slovakia right behind me and um, some of the horses that I collect because I'm a, a horseman. So my name is Martin. I come from uh, Slovakia, from Kosice. Uh, Grzegorz told um, several words about me, so I'm not going to uh, waste your precious time uh, about me. I have a business called uh, Bright House, and uh, we try to focus and bring to people bright ideas. And uh, we really try to work with bright people and uh, make more bright people as we can. So uh, let's hit it so we won't uh, waste uh, any time. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, reading and... Uh, ah, hello from Parno. <laughs> I'm coming next week, so I might see you in person. Um, if you guys uh, can just drop a line and tell me what do you consider to be reading? Hmm? Just a couple of lines. 
how do you introduce reading or what do you think reading is? I see some people are typing. Don't type everybody at the same time. Understanding a written text. Okay, new information, textual information, learning something new, relaxing, creating fun. Okay, getting information, pleasure or gaining information, getting some info material, learning new words and context. Perfect. Great practice of English. Reading is the mind. Uh, you got to uh, exercise the body. Okay, relaxing, getting information, one of the most important language skills. Perfect. Yes. Okay, I'm going to take um, two minutes of your time and I'm going to uh, click on the next slide that I have and I want you to read it uh, yourself. Um, it's a pity that this is quite a monologue uh, discussion because you can't, you know, uh, talk to me back and we, can, um, we can't read out loud together. So it's just going to be me talking, which is I always said a teacher should uh, be quiet and not have a time, a speaking time as much <laughs> big as I have right now. So. Take a look at the next uh, slide, okay? Reading makes me happy. Yes, absolutely. So, read that now. Take a minute. Reading is a problem for my students. Okay, <laughs> I see what you did there. Cool, I can. I could actually understood. Super, I can read that. That's great. Perfect. Okay. Um, it's quite interesting. When I came across uh, this article, and there are many, many, many online um, that you can, uh, the context is not clear. It doesn't matter about the context. It's just, um, it's just the letters. And you can see that sometimes it's not important what we have or how the text is structured or how the letters or words go in together but we can get the gist we can get the main idea and um, basically as you mentioned several times in your comments um, yes reading is about getting the message getting the meaning and having fun so maybe maybe when you look at the text um, in that way that you might be getting um, some sort of information it's always uh, interesting well, let's take a look at the different slide that I have here, and we're going to redefine uh, what um, reading uh, might be. So, if you take a look um, at the next one, and we're going to be uh, redefining why do people read foreign languages? So, why have you started? Why have you become uh, English teachers? Why do you read in English? Do you read more in English than uh, in your own mother tongue? Need and curiosity to practice. Perfect. Mm -hmm. English rules, exactly. 50-50, okay. Learn some new vocab, all right. Somebody inspired you, perfect. I had a, also a very good uh, English teacher at uh, basic school. It's more challenging and fun. I think in English, super. Okay, to practice, read more in English, to learn something, perfect, exactly. So we have uh, all you guys can read all of those comments on, uh, over there to understand the words in the context. More interesting books are available. Exactly. This is, this is also the other thing that um, when I try to do some kind of a presentation, for example, like this, when I look for uh, material, um, it's usually in English. Uh, when you go online, it's much easier to look for the stuff in English. And I think this is very important to explain to our students that majority of uh, text and a quality uh, text is um, fortunately or unfortunately for some people um, in English. So what is the aim uh, of today's um, seminar is that I want you to motivate your students, maybe to motivate you yourself to read more um, in English. Um, I think use more audiobooks. Perfect. We're going to be talking about uh, combining uh, audiobooks with uh, textbooks and uh, how this can also uh, improve our uh, reading skills. Um, I say that speaking the language and reading in the language are really the highest and um, the most two important uh, skills and qualities that one needs to acquire when uh, learning a language. Hi everyone. 428 people. Amazing, isn't it? Okay, so guys, we have 11 questions here. I would like you to also maybe write those down. I will share this um, 
presentation with you. And maybe if you can tell me about the first one, I like books which I like books which tell true stories. What about you? You like books which are funny, okay, have lots of direct speech, thought provoking, super, very good, easy to understand, inspiring, gripping, funny stories that teach me something, are complicated, controversial, unpredictable, inspire, wow, 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 super, true stories, based on true, exactly, this is me, I love uh, true stories, okay. Let's let's share some more. Um, the funniest book I've ever read was. Now you go. The funniest book you've ever read. Tell me. English fictions for progress. <laughs> Sapkowski's short stories. Harry Potter. Adrian Moe. Chmielewska. Okay. Fight Club. Teenager. Super. The Hitchhiker's Guide to. Ah yes 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 yes. Ogis Kokus book. Okay. Super. Three men in a boat. Short stories. Wow. Year of the hair. Everything is red. A Polish author. Super, 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 super. Good. What about uh, what would you like to read? The thickest book you have ever gone through. The Boy in a Striped Pajamas. Three men in a boat. Quo Vadis. Quran. Wow. Under the dome. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Okay, so there are some uh, questions, not questions, there are some uh, sentences. For example, the thickest book I've ever gone through was, I hate it when the author, or I hate it when there is no um, end to a book, or when the author leaves the space uh, for us to find out what actually happened. Can you tell me what you read last night? Secret. Okay. Pride and Prejudice, The Game of Thrones, all parts, Fallen, okay, English book, <laughs> Guidebook to Malta, somebody is going for a holiday, super, Fifty Shades of Grey, all right, The Pillars of the, super, all right, what about um, the book that you could not live without? What about the book you could not live without? Historical, Lost by Mrows, The Bible, very nice, The Bible, Narnia, Harry Potter, Witcher, Harry Potter, Bible for sure, Quran, The Bible, Super, The Bible, The Bible, Master and Margaret, The Lord of the Ring, Super. Guys, this is a very nice uh, warm up. So maybe um, if you do a lesson, we're going to be talking about the, the reading skills and how you incorporate reading in the classroom. And I will ask you several questions. So it will be more of a, me talking and waiting for your um, responses. Um, I will give you another question. How much, how much vocabulary or how many words do you need to have in order to be able to go through a book in a foreign language. Would you tell me your rough guess? 8,500, 1,000. Okay, Natalie, 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 you said, Natalie was right. Uh, it's actually 5,000 words. So maybe you can, yeah, there are Janina Pukeliene, very good. So 5,000 is the right uh, answer. So maybe you can somehow really, yeah, there are uh, books I'm going to make reference to, uh, very good books uh, on how to teach reading skills that I've been uh, reading lately, <laughs> no wonder why, but yeah, they say that it's 5,000 words uh, actually to, to have in your register so you are um, able to read uh, the book. Let's take a look at um, what makes a text difficult. Uh, I know that you work with several types of students, and my other question is, before we start and analyze the whole reading process, what is uh, new vocabulary, okay, mm -hmm. new words make it difficult, okay, idioms, long sentences, grammar, descriptive language, super, tough topic, okay, agree, slang, culture differences, perfect point, mm -hmm. Advanced structures, phrasal constructions, phrasal verbs. Exactly. Maturity of a student. That's very good. We're going to be talking about the intellectual uh, limits 
uh, within the classroom, grammar, colloquial expressions, slang, exactly. Perfect, okay, let's take a look at the, uh, I have prepared uh, four different texts uh, for you to look at. So let's take a look at the first one, okay? What do you think is the uh, problem in this uh, reading? Yeah, unknown words, okay, language, exactly, <laughs> right, unknown language, so this is something in uh, Finnish, so um, I suppose that there is nobody uh, from Finland um, in this webinar, but of course, first thing to, uh, to really bear in mind is that we need to know, what is that, yeah, it's not English, it's, um, it's Estonian, yes, it is Estonian. I, I was thinking either Finnish or Estonian. But exactly, we need to bear in mind that the reader and uh, the sender of a message need to um, be exchanging the same code, the same language, and uh, this needs to be understood. Okay, what about this one? What about this text? This is in English, so you can read it. What do you think? why this might be a difficult text to read okay you said that it's a jargon okay field of studies exactly scientific specific perfect so i mean i understand basically every single word but since i'm not a big fan of science uh, and i'm not going to take any chemistry um you know, of course, I might be not interested in reading the topic so scientific text exactly chemical reaction so yeah, whether when you are a teacher of uh, chemistry and English, then you can uh, put this together. But if you are a sole English teacher, uh, you might have troubles understanding uh, this text as well. Another example is this one. Can you go through this one, please? Okay, exactly. It's a one, basically one sentence. It's too long. It's philosophical, psychological, too long, too elaborate. Perfect. Too elaborate. I like that. Too long and complicated. Exactly. Psychology, philosophy. All right. Difficult construction. So even though that we understand word by word, we understand basically the whole meaning, the, the concept or the... Um, as we said, the consideration of existence, exactly. Um, it's a very difficult topic maybe to discuss uh, with, some of the, uh, with some of us and some of the people are, might be not interested or might not you know, have so many words or ideas to talk about it. And the last one, um, this is quite easy and I would like to work um, on this one with you. So you can read this one and uh, maybe I can help you when I read it out loud. Converting in the vicinity of the residential area populated by those of piscatorial avocation, the minuscule crustacean was enmeshed in a reticulated object with an interstices between the intersection. All right. Specified vocabulary, examples of sophisticated language. What exactly? I like your reactions because sometimes, you know, people ask me like, well, you're an English teacher. So you should know. And I said, no, I don't know. You know, I'm not a walking dictionary. And it's okay to say that to your students as well. But maybe if you if you look at the word of piscatorial, can can anybody think of the word that um, we can think of? Piscatorial fish. Perfect. So we know that there is some uh, fish. We know the word vocation. So what do you think vocation might be? Vocation, piscatorial avocation, holiday, perfect. Okay, so we have um, vocation. So avocation is actually hobby, job, super, super, super. Okay, we have the mini school. What do you think mini school could mean? Little, tiny, super, 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 okay. Crustacean, crustacean, crust, 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 crustacean. Crustacean. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> okay, video stopping. Maybe it's my big face, right? Crusty, perfect. Shell, tiny, super, super. Crust, very nice, very nice, very nice. 
All right. So maybe, maybe if you, maybe if you go word by word, and maybe if you really try to think of other words, other languages that you know, maybe if you use your mother tongue sometimes, um, sometimes it helps. Um, Ten years ago, I was convinced that using mother tongue in any type of um, exercise, whether it was speaking, writing, reading, or uh, use of English, uh, Latin helps, French helps, exactly, Spanish helps. So basically, uh, all the words, uh, knowing Esperanto, uh, Polish doesn't, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're funny. Um, so knowing more languages, maybe to be, um, maybe to be open to more uh, reading um, and to more objects that are around us, maybe hobbies, if you are a fishman or if you uh, do and you go on vacations very often, you know, you come across words that, um, are called receptive. We're going to be talking about vocabulary later on that is receptive that we know about, but we are somehow not able uh, to use it. So this is basically um, just a text that uh, you, you might look at, and sometimes it's not as difficult as it might seem uh, from the beginning. Latin and French, exactly. So moving on, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, also uh, open mind uh, theories. Then those are the new series, basically of, uh, uh, they go from A1 to C1 and C2 level. And um, I would like to say hello to Steve uh, taylor Knowles, who is the author of those books. And as we go through today, I would like you to maybe learn and to get to know how to teach uh, reading skills and maybe to show you some know-how uh, about how to teach the reading skills. Okay. So, how to become a, a better uh, reader, how to become a successful uh, user of English, how text works and how they are uh, structured. This is what we are going to take a look at. And of course, the most difficult and uh, I think for you the most interesting uh, topic, how to succeed in uh, examination when uh, doing uh, reading. And of course, how to communicate uh, meanings. We're going to be talking about uh, also the uh, comprehension and also that um, you need to realize the potential of your students and that comprehension is basically uh, mm -hmm. hold on Camila my students don't like reading they sometimes don't want to try to understand the text yes we will talk about it and uh, maybe why um, we're gonna be talking about the comprehension comprehension is a private process so even when you read and your husband or your partner reads, you might get a different, um, different opinion because uh, the comprehension goes in your private own mode and you get what you, what you need uh, to get. So let's take a look how we can change it. Can you read what's in there? What's on this slide? Power of the eyes. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to be talking about you can't. Okay. Lee Tonisman. You have to <laughs> look better. Power of the eyes. Okay. So you can see also that when the letters are scattered in the text, um, that sometimes um, it's difficult to read. Sometimes it's easy. And we have to bear in mind that today's kids, uh, the students that, uh, that we are working with, uh, are exposed to a lot of uh, online uh, text, a lot of um, um, images, visual images that are um, attention drawing and also um, they're trying to catch our eye. So as um, Hori, yeah, <laughs> no, 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 you read in line, so it says power of the eyes. So there are some facts. Uh, the eye can span about four centimeters at a time, which encompasses four or five words on average page. Yes, my students like reading interesting texts, but I don't like reading, they don't like reading by heart. No, nothing should be uh, read by heart because everything is at hand. This has become an extension of your right hand. And uh, I'm sure that you read, your students read, everybody reads um, today on smartphones. So um, your students think reading is boring. Okay, we're going to be talking also about the promotion of reading and what you read. And maybe if you carry your own book in the classroom and you tell them, oh guys, I'm reading this book and it's, a, it's about this and this and this and this. So um, maybe you can um, motivate them uh, how to read. 
Uh, in addition, many people don't utilize their peripheral or vision at the ends of uh, sentences. We're going to be talking how to read uh, junks of words. And just some of the things that we don't read in a straight line, but rather in a sequence of saccadic movements, or we can say jumps. Each of these saccades ends with a temporary snapshot of the text within your focus. So basically, while once you, um, maybe when you do reading in a classroom, and this is my next question that I want to ask you, whether you do reading, you do the use of grammar, you use uh, speaking, and then you say, okay, we're going to do, and we're going to do reading, and we're going to focus on reading for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes. Do you do reading within the classroom, let's say 50 or 60 minutes, or do you do reading, let's say, every Wednesday, or you do reading once a week? How does it work in your class? And what do you think, let's share opinions, what do you think works better? Every day, every lesson, okay. Within the lesson, not for so long, both, every lesson, every day, as homework, perfect. Every lesson, almost every lesson, once a week, both, homework, have a home reading, super. Okay, I'm sure that many of you have questions like home reading, how am I supposed to or how can I, you know, double check whether this um, reading has been done or whether they do the reading at home. This is this can be uh, tricky, sometimes homework. Literature classes, perfect, once a week, at least 10 minutes. Okay, super. Um, I'm not going to give you the best formula, what is the best, whether it's um, reading every day or whether it's reading once a week, but uh, you need to know your students, you need to know what kind of students uh, you work with and how to make this uh, interesting for them, or whether you read one thick book or when do you read uh, articles from the text. When you read articles from the text, um, I like in open mind the idea that they are not too long, they are not um, you know, very confusing, and they carry quite interesting information and that they are very um, up to date. Um, I learned a lot of things about 3D printing, about how does it work in the universe, and really, um, we need to consider uh, today's teaching in the 21st century as sharing, that we teach language, but we learn also about how people think, how people work and what they do. So maybe uh, throughout teaching and reading, we can learn uh, something new. Yeah, I let them read the text, then I choose the book app, then translate it with them, then we try to start exercising. Okay, this is kind of like an old school um, Form, but I'm not saying that it's not working. For example, I don't pre-teach a uh, new vocabulary. We just go, I don't read out loud uh, the new text because basically then the whole idea of uh, reading um, is lost because they, are, they don't think it's challenging anymore. Um, and you, exactly, you should read more what students uh, want. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, maybe um, how, much, how many of you do uh, reading aloud? I know that you cannot uh, raise hands, but um, just tell me whether you do uh, reading aloud. Not me. Okay, yes, we do. Okay. And if you do da, 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 okay. If you do reading out loud, what is the purpose of uh, reading out loud? What is your, um, what do you try to track? Mm -hmm. With the younger ones, super. Okay. Pronunciation, very good. Mm -hmm. pronunciation, intonation, pronunciation. Super. Yes, as you said, um, reading out loud is very beneficial and very useful when you do it with uh, young students because you can teach them intonation and every single time and pronunciation and every single time what I do is always I try to tell my students please sound natural. They don't really need to pick up this um, American native very blah 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 um, accent but, you know, they need to sound natural. They need to know where the comma is, where the exclamation mark is, where the question mark is. So um, really encourage people and your students maybe to uh, make gestures, maybe to make some noises. We're going to be talking about it. Um, how your brain works when it reads. Your brain fuses images together to form and to fill in uh, the blank spaces. So... Um, Really, it's not about uh, how we think we read. It's not that difficult because they think, oh, reading is boring. But maybe um, what, I, what I was thinking today when I was um, um, uh, sitting down and thinking of how I'm going to 
<laughs> tell you this is the thing that um, really uh, try to motivate them and maybe uh, you should have a lesson about reading itself try to have a lesson maybe tell them to bring their favorite book uh, try to um, tell them about the techniques of reading tell, uh, try to tell them about really give them the text show them that the words uh, the letters do not need to come one by one that actually reading is a process in mind and how it works and maybe when they understand um, that reading is really one very difficult process and uh, how the things how we comprehend are quite interesting. Uh, maybe they, they will be more uh, motivated and interested in, uh, in uh, reading. What I want you to do now is that I want you to look at this um, slogan or whatever it is and read it once and then read it, read it again. And try to soften your gaze when you read by relaxing your face and expanding your gaze you'll begin to see blocks of words instead of seeing each word as distant unit. Really, take a minute, look at the, um, look at the idea, what I have in uh, the box or in the balloon, whatever, and try to read it once or twice. And try to really work with your eyes. Try to soften your gaze. Don't go like this, uh, but really calm, maybe sit back a little bit and get it. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, me neither. I've never thought of it before. But uh, as I said, to be honest, I read quite a, a lot of um, materials. Um, and while reading uh, the materials on reading, I really had to go through skipping. I really had to go through scanning. I really had to go to skimming. And I really had to pick up because in three or four days, when you when I found out that there are 20 books about reading skills, 15 research papers, I realized that uh, there is no time in the world that I could, you know, somehow have uh, to read, to go through this. So I really needed to pick up all of those skills myself uh, to deliver you uh, this webinar uh, today. But exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a good tip. And maybe if you try to really just to give a lesson on reading, maybe this is the way how to uh, motivate your uh, students. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also, sub vocalization and uh, regression. This is quite interesting because I think all of us, uh, maybe not, but I'm talking for the majority, um, um, know what sub vocalization is. Yeah, sub vocalization is basically repeating the words as you read in your head. So basically, you reading and then you rereading again in your mind. Do you do that? Reading the same passage two or three times helps. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you do sub vocalization? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Sometimes. Okay. And now I'm going to tell, unfortunately, this is a very good, <laughs> very good comment. Unfortunately, I did it. I was a big sub vocalization uh, fan. And last week I've tried and I trained myself not to uh, sub vocalize. And I'm going to give you some hints and I want you to try maybe with your students uh, as well. And I'm going to tell you not to do it or really eliminate uh, sub vocalization as much uh, as you can. We're going to be also talking about regression and regression is what we do. I do it very often or I can say that I did it very often because I try to pick up uh, new techniques now. And regression is basically, um, it is very hard to break the habit, yes. Thank you, Tomas. Uh, but um, we will try. We will try to break the habit and not to regress. Regress is basically you read and then you doubt yourself. Did I understood? Did I understand? Um, am I getting the picture? You know, do I know what is it? Is it clear? Is it crystal clear? So then you go back and you reread. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I tell you to stop sub vocalize and to stop uh, doing uh, regression. Uh, yeah, especially when reading Economist, yes, <laughs> yes, there are some magazines that I need to regress, exactly, because then I'm doubting my intellectual uh, limits myself. Okay, so what we can do, okay, so uh, maybe practice trying not to sub-vocalize until this is habit, uh, until this habit is, habit is erased. 
reading blocks of words also helps and it's harder to vocalize a block of words. So if that doesn't work, try this technique. Repeatedly say A-E-I-O-U or count one, two, three, four or one, two, three, four, five as you read the text. Okay, guys, what I want you to try now is that try uh, reading this practice, trying not to sub-vocalize in your head, okay? And at the same time, I know women are going to be better at this because they, they can do, that's what they say, two things at the same time. And try to say A-E-I-O-U or one, two, three, four, five in your mind and tell me whether you could grab the text, how uh, on a scale of uh, zero to 100, uh, and the percentage, give me the percentage, how much you were actually able to, yeah, multitasking, exactly. And why we need to focus on multitasking, because we are talking about the 21st century skills. And really today people need to be able to do more than just one thing. It's like speaking English is just a standard, right? So it's not, uh, it is very hard. I can concentrate hard. Okay, it works. Schiff Christoph. Very good, thumbs up, hard. I'm listening to you, uh, giving up soup to my husband. <laughs> very good, it's hard, it is very hard. 50% works, it doesn't work. Okay, it's okay, hard. I can tell you from my own experience, I've been doing this now every day for 15 minutes. I've been trying to, to read and uh, to be honest, I'm, uh, you know, I have picked uh, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, the book that I have read, um, the thick one, the thin one. So I know the plot, I know the stories, I know the words in Slovak, I know the words in English. Uh, practice makes perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I cannot force myself not to read. Milos, you need to, you need to. That's what I said, because uh, I think that if I were uh, back 12 and my mom would take me to a doctor, I would definitely uh, be diagnosed with ADHD because anything can distract me. People who know me, who met me in uh, person, they can tell. So this is also very good uh, practice for also um, with regression. It's about self-confidence because you need to believe in yourself that what I have read is true and it works. And also with sub-vocalization, it's again, um, good for skimming and scanning, good for skipping the text because you don't really need to focus on everything. And uh, maybe this is also um, the way how we can help uh, students to succeed in exams because we know that those readings can be sometimes a uh, pain in the neck. So let's take a look at um, other lists. Uh, what have we uh, what have we been reading or what have you been reading your students uh, it's usually contact lists yeah we go and we just scroll through uh, contacts we read statistics labels um, emails which are usually short with acronyms or descriptive language timetables instructions notices and application forms um, I would highly encourage you to join uh, English book club or um, Mac reader um, and online uh, readers and all of the things that uh, Macmillan uh, supports for reading. So <clears throat> short stories, emails, exactly. Instructions in computer games, exactly. I learned so much vocabulary about armory and swords and everything because many of my students really play those games and uh, they read and they actually get together like us today, people from all around the world or from Europe, and they get together and exactly, and they play the games, they use the vocabulary. So the reading is actually there. All right. Okay. Can you tell me again, this is um, also maybe focusing on a grammar form and uh, maybe a little bit of um, meaning of, of the words. We know that the more you read, the more you know, the more you, mm hmm achieve very good okay understand the more you learn the more you can imagine want to know expand your vocabulary super the more you forget exactly yeah. the more you possess super move forward the more you are sure the more you forget the more you like english okay Super. Maybe, maybe this is this is the slogan. Maybe that you can take and maybe you can bring within the classroom. And uh, we're going to be talking uh, later about tweets and also about the 
hashtag sign because um, maybe I am a little bit out of date. I do don't I don't do a lot of hashtags, but maybe on the slides mm, you see now that I use those hashtags because um, what we do. Yeah, the more you read, the more you get confused. Yes, the more you know about the world yourself, and the more. The more I read, the more I um, realize that I am not such a freak that, as I sometimes think I am. There are more freaks in the world. So um, you can really start a debate about reading and also you can teach a little bit of grammar with the more I study, the less I know, the more I try, the less, the more I fail, etc. So <laughs> the more you don't understand, exactly. So this is uh, this is also one way of how to maybe think of uh, grammar structures, of uh, grammar words in helping you to uh, succeed in reading. Reasons for reading, reading for meaning and reading for real life purposes is um, everything that we need to find um, in books. So you are probably familiar with uh, sender and receiver with the message and then you see a lot of lots of lots of uh, question marks. As we talked about the um, uh, comprehension, and as I said that the comprehension is a really private uh, process, uh, somebody gets 100%, somebody gets 70%, somebody gets 20 So the role of a teacher is to really signpost questions, to really have those questions prepared. What did he mean by that? Um, could you guys clarify for me what is this um, dialogue about? So really, 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 um, it's very, uh, this is not my brain. Your brain <laughs> has more things in it? I'm sure it is. <laughs> so as you think that if you look in the brain, there are so many things going on that sometimes it's really, really difficult to focus. Sometimes it's really difficult to um, regress. Sometimes it's really difficult to sub-vocalize because there are so many uh, processes uh, going on. So really try to explain to your students how reading works and um, how we can help each other, you as a teacher, to your students and your students, how they can help you actually maybe to come up with ideas that they are uh, interested in. Okay, do you do with your hands something to locate the word in the dictionary? Do you read, how do you read a train or bus schedule? Do you use hands when you read? Mm -hmm. Rarely, sometimes. Finger, yes, no, sometimes. Students use thumbs. Okay, no, yes, sometimes. Yes to a point, sometimes, of course. Mm -hmm. On the tablet, <laughs> yes, not often. Very good, very good. Underlining is great, super, not too often. Okay, for those who responded no or not too often, Maybe go back uh, to when you were a kid and you did that and it really helps because it's very natural, it's very common for us to use hands. Maybe you can use a piece of paper. When you try, for example, to uh, incorporate regression, it's good to put the paper from the top and go down as you read. When you do normal reading, then you go from top and down and um, it helps. You can also use the fingers because when you go, for example, to bus station or when you need to go through some kind of a schedule or through calendar, you intentionally and without thinking basically use your hands to navigate you through the text. So um, students are lazy to work with paper dictionaries. Yes. Um, I don't know how much uh, you are allowed uh, to use this in a classroom. But uh, this helps as a dictionary. Or you can have a person, just assign one person to be the dictionary man. Mm -hmm. You use pencil or a sheet of paper. Super, super. If you are not allowed to use a um, um, phone in a classroom, have a person. Have a person that would uh, be the dictionary person in a classroom. Okay. We talked about skimming, so uh, more on that and more, more on more interesting things about skimming. This is the thing that every teacher should have. It's called Teaching Reading Skills and it's in a foreign language and it was written by uh, Christine Natal 
it's quite interesting and very, very, very uh, useful book uh, for me. So if you need more information about what is skimming and what is scanning, how to do scanning, I highly, highly, highly uh, recommend to get this book. And there are many, many, many more methodological books uh, written by Macmillan that are, as you said, uh, Bibles. So those are uh, Bibles uh, for me. <clears throat> okay. Again, I played with texts, so because you may be used to reading every word and may be uncomfortable leaving some words out, you need to give yourself permission to overlook some words by skimming, scanning, and skipping material according to your reading purpose. I give you permission to not read everything. This is what you need to tell your students in order to make this reading maybe more interesting, maybe more motivating, and uh, maybe more uh, fun. Okay, very short uh, exercise for you. Uh, guess the word, hashtag, go on, read. The first one will get, um, what? Um, a sentence in Slovak to translate. <laughs> they never read everything, that's true. And it's good maybe to tell them. Mm -hmm. It's very important to tell them that I know that you don't read everything. And this is called skimming and scanning. And then rainbow, exactly. Yes, it is a rainbow. So now you learn a new vocabulary that a flat is also uh, a rainbow. And there are many, many, many more exercises like this um, in book and also in uh, Open Mind uh, series. Many, many, many uh, word games, reading games and things that we say. Yes, it is a rainbow. It is a beautiful. Okay, um, let's reflect on your own uh, methods. There are three. So we have respond and meaning. So this is basically uh, what you do. When you say that you teach reading, you teach new vocabulary. How many of you teach new vocabulary through reading? A lot. I would say many of you use, mm -hmm. yes, exactly, yeah. Sometimes, mm -hmm. okay. Of course, um, reading is good for new vocabulary, but it's not always the main uh, characteristics of the reading. Uh, of course, it is to understand the meaning and the new vocab. The other method is to speak, to articulate and to pronounce, to use the articulation, to use the full stops, um, to use, you know, to really sound natural. And the third one is to um, decipher or to identify or to decode as with the word uh, piscorial or we have the crustacean. So those are all of the things that you can do uh, with the reading. So as again, articulate, get the message, the meaning, and also to uh, decode. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, maybe I will say something uh, shocking, but... Uh, I talked to my students and uh, they were not really in reading, but then we started uh, reading clubs and uh, I told them about books that I read. I told them about my favorite book, which is Angela's Ashes by uh, Frank McFord. Uh, those of you who read it uh, might know what I'm talking about. Those of you who have not read the book, I highly uh, encourage you to get the book. And also it is a very good book for all types of um, ages. Uh, so it's fun, it's sad, it's controversial, it's thought-provoking, even though that it's set more or less a uh, hundred years ago, it's still uh, up to date. So I would say that um, students' motivation is actually high and we teachers need just to go for texts that are beneficial and profitable for our students. And if you look down at the slide, there is my name. Martin Jelinek, and I highlighted words in line with demand. Uh, this is also a type of a reading uh, that I like to do with my students. Angela Deshes, Frank McCord, exactly. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Grzegorz. Uh, it's one of my really favorite books, and I go back to this book um, almost on a yearly basis. And what you can do also with text, you can look for words, you can look for signs in the text. And what I like in Open Mind that this is uh, 
very often mentioned in text that you can work with text, you can predict the text, you can start the sentence and let students finish, or you can give the, you can give them the end of a sentence and they need to come with the beginning. So do reading in a more imaginary way, in a more fun way, in a more what they can actually um, get from the <clears throat> from the reading. Okay. Um, guidance before reading. Do you read the text out loud? Don't do it. Um, let them read, okay? Provide a reason uh, for reading, okay? The purpose of the text is first and foremost to convey a message. So, yeah, don't read. Don't read the text in the book. Give them the, the text to read uh, themselves and then ask questions. Then maybe you can read um, again all together. Then maybe you can have a person or a vol uh, volunteer who would like to read. And then you can focus on intonation, on full stops, on articulation. And maybe then you can also incorporate uh, decoding of the words and maybe work uh, with, uh, with the text as a whole. Those are the texts uh, taken from um, Open Mind. Uh, this is, for example, quite interesting um, um, read about uh, tomorrow's gadgets. And I like uh, gadgets and uh, I think everybody today. Or um, kids like it because they are always looking for I pair six and I cherry eight. So it's always quite interesting to learn about new things. If you can see, I underlined just um, three um, things. The first one is write, not anymore. So if I read or if I would um, um, read the text, I would go, a printer is a ma machine that takes words and pictures and makes a hard copy of them on paper in two dimensions, write. So not only I would say write, but I go with my face like this. I'm not afraid to, I don't, I'm not saying that I want to be a clown in the classroom, but if I am surprised or if I want to make sure that something is, I go right and not anymore, not anymore. So I really try to sound in a natural way so they can actually, maybe this is the thing that they will remember from the reading, that when they want to sound sarcastic or when they want to use irony, and they need to actually sound it, they need to say it. Of course, when you have another uh, two sentences that are underlined, are made in a factory, making things. Um, I am very happy that um, all of you who are here are basically from also post-Soviet or post-communist countries, whatever. And as me, and I'm sure that you remember that everywhere on everything was written Made in China. I couldn't read English back then, so now I know that it was made in China. So every single time I go through uh, reading, exactly, yes, <laughs> every single time I go through reading and I see words like make, I use gestures, I use uh, oral intonation, and I also use postures when necessary. So yeah, I remember it too, and sometimes. So those are the things that sometimes we can really bring something of our own into the classroom and make the language, um, the picking up of the language uh, much um, uh, easier. So try to think of, uh, I see that you are already uh, sharing Angela's ashes in PDF. Uh, I would be happy uh, if you got back to me and tell me what you think about the uh, what do you think about the book? Okay, um, we are running out of time and I have many, many, many slides uh, to go uh, because I talk too much, but try to really focus on how to introduce the text, um, how to introduce the uh, pro procedures and the words and vocabulary. Um, also, um, if you look at the top of the reading that I also, uh, it's an extract from Open Mind, all the readings or majority of the readings that are taken and put in the books are either online debate or are some kind of a um, online magazine or it's something, an extract from some flipboard or some something that it's online. So they are reading, they are reading. You just need to find out what they read and where they read it, okay? So ask them. Um, to, to talk about the top downtown task, um, it's also very often mentioned in uh, teaching uh, reading skills. 
again, this is like a promotion, but I really love the book. Um, it's about how much do we already know about the topic. So if you have a reading, let's say about weather or about family, uh, let's talk about what they know about family, what they know about single, about nuclear uh, family, what, how much, what family they live in. And maybe, you know, it's going to take quite a time till you get actually to the reading, but you will uh, set up this top down task and maybe the reading uh, will become much more uh, interesting. Again, see, you can see at the top, this is for example an online forum. So students are very, very, very often um, somehow involved in uh, web reading, in uh, online reading. So um, even if you have readings in a printed version, they usually come from the net. And this is where people uh, today read. You can tell uh, yourself. Asking uh, signpost questions, what did he mean? Why did he say that? Why she was wearing that dress? What was the meaning of this? And maybe people will get a different idea. As I said, that the comprehension process is very, very, very um, individual. Breaking up the text is another very important thing. Uh, don't read the text as a whole. Please focus on some ideas or some, some blocks discuss it and then once you understood the first one then move on to the next one and the third one and the fourth it's not very good okay i'm very happy that you're going to uh try it and um don't do the, the whole don't 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 read in bulk it's not um helping and it's not uh good mm -hmm. of course uh there are topics about the parties how people party uh before you read the topic about partying uh, tell them about your party. Tell them about um, how you party, but uh, how you do not celebrate your age. Many, many interesting things. There is an exercise uh, that you can also do. Um, you can write um, the country, a boy's name, a girl's name, a city, a verb in the past, and all of those things. Um, this is actually taken from a different uh, Macmillan book. This is taken from uh, Gateway, and it was given to me by another very, very uh, good author and a teacher, David Spencer. And this is also um, a task, what we can actually focus on in uh, reading or in writing. You have a story, you have the country, the names, all of those. So the story took place in, it all began when, they decided first, etc. So you give them some chronology in uh, reading. And while reading or doing exercises like this, you prepare students also for writing. So I'm going to choose uh, one person. Uh, Grzegorz, if you are there and if you are able to tell us the story of how you and your wife met using this. Okay, so Grzegorz, if you could type now and tell us, it all began when, when what? Mm -hmm. We went to a concert, okay? First, what did you do first? <laughs> first, she wasn't so much, can't remember, okay. I think first she wasn't that into you, okay, and then? <laughs> What about then? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah. We were at school. Okay. Hi, Gata. <laughs> okay. And then, and mm -hmm, it's a secret. All right. <laughs> All right. So you can use this story also as a type of um, reading skills, also for vocabulary, if there is a new vocabulary, and also as a structure for uh, writing, uh, <laughs> writing, um, exercise okay uh, i will share those slides with you so you will get um, everything from uh, grzegorz or from uh, macmillan polska okay how do we deal with a new uh, language is exactly the vocabulary that it's uh, in there okay um, those are also some pictures that uh, are mentioned uh, uh, how young people work uh, today i'm too tired to listen to a story tonight mom just email something and i will read it tomorrow just make sure that it's uh, not too long okay <laughs> we bought tickets okay so i think this is exercise that you can use uh, very often let's focus on a word attack this is the the attack of the word that might come as unknown okay so let's say i'm going to give you i'm going to tell you a story 
and you will try to write down what type of a word um, I'm talking about, okay? I was very thirsty, so I picked up a talk. While drinking, um, the water was dripping down my mouth, so I need to put the talk down on the table. As I put the talk on the table, I realized that only the handle stayed in my hand. Shoot. What is the talk? A teapot, a mug, very good, a cup, exactly. It can be a jar, it can be a container, it can be a glass, super, okay. So without even knowing the, the meaning, talk is just a made up word, it's not even a Slovak word. It might be a bottle, but bottle usually doesn't have a handle. So this is exactly how you can go on a word. Okay, so maybe you can look around the vocabulary and this is how you can attack the words. You can attack sentences, you can attack structures of words or more of that. Uh, we talked about the um, vocabulary or a register. We have a, um, we said that we need 5,000 words, active words to read a book. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh, if we have receptive vocabulary, receptive vocabulary, I put it um, in purpose, on purpose from the other side, is the vocabulary that we know, but we don't use orally. So when we come across this receptive vocabulary in a book, what, it becomes um, as we read and it becomes there on every other page again and again, that receptive becomes active because then all of a sudden uh, we might uh, use it in, uh, in our overs, oral speech. Okay, this is another uh, vocabulary um, <clears throat> exercise. So this is just to look for synonyms, okay? Like exactly what we did with the word talk. So we had the mug, we had this, we had that. So um, this is also um, another thing that we can do. Um, I am going to really rush through the uh, last sentences, uh, last pages that we have. Um, there is a lot of uh, to discover at uh, videos and reading texts at uh, macmillanreaders.com. So please be engaged and motivate yourself uh, to become a better reader, a better teacher, and a better uh, facilitator of uh, English language. Okay, this is what we do. Please assign some students to use sounds when particular words appear. I'm sure that you use it. Use gestures to tell stories or stand up or do some write, not anymore, all of those things. So play some music. I read already that you sometimes play when you have extensive reading, play some music. It's going to make uh, the room much more um, calmer. The atmosphere is better. Okay. Popcorn reading also. Popcorn reading is when you choose or you you basically go, you are doing more of an invigilating thing in the classroom and you can tap on a student's shoulder and you can, now you continue and you can do many, 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 many things. We really, one hour is not enough time to cover everything that it's in this uh, smart book or in open mind uh, series. So don't forget to ask questions. Last thing that I want to pay attention um, for one minute is giving words meaning or a grammar. For example, when you have the word currently in your text, okay, currently I've been doing, uh, I've been reading this, or currently I am sitting. So you can use two structures of uh, grammar, either present perfect continuous or present perfect. Every other day we go, every Christmas we set up a Christmas tree, we decorate. So this is kind of like a prediction, a preposition to grammar structure. When you have the examples like four generations, four generations, uh, Macmillan have been involved in uh, writing the best uh, teacher's books or methodological books and all of the things. So if you have the reading or if you have the text, please try to focus on grammar or try to tell students that when they come across such vocabulary, um, it can work like this. Okay. The, the sooner students realize that a mistake is an opportunity to learn, the better. So please tell them that making mistakes is uh, okay. Another thing that, um, just very briefly, uh, bear in mind that internet is the thing that raised them. So they read things on Facebook, they read things on Twitter, and also on the Instagram. 
uh, they write like this. Sometimes they write a um, text message and I need to decode. For example, like, by the way, as soon as possible, laughing out loud, the very late one, talk to you later, be right back, do know, just kidding, uh, thanks in advance, oh, I see, orange juice, outfit of the date, estimated time of arri uh, uh, arrival, and see you later. So those are just few of the words and things that um, they can uh, teach you. So ask them. This is how they express themselves now, 140 characters only in a tweet. So what I suggest you to do is sometimes when you go uh, through a text uh, like this, um, try to ask them if they can read and tweet. What would be the hashtag uh, sign for them uh, to use, okay? Instead of 140 characters, maybe focus on 25 words, etc. They can come with words, like if I could, I would, but I can't, so I won't. Again, synchronized teaching, where you can focus on four uh, grammar types. And um, just to go through, this is a finishing line. Those are taken from um, e-cards uh, that are on Google, uh, also focusing on grammar. So very funny quotes, uh, just to leave you with. Okay. Yeah. So you can read, as this is a reading. I uh, am back, classroom. Martin. Uh, we need to be wrapping up since, uh, you know, we are running out of time. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are mm -hmm. about to. <laughs> okay, so just a few things to tell you. And uh, if you have something that I've come across lately, it's the talks. It's a free application. Very interesting for students because it's talk about art, movies, uh, and all the things that they are interested in. And... Uh, role of a student, role of a teacher. So you know this, and I will share the slides with you, um, as I said. So this is, again, just what you can do with the text. Try to look for hidden messages in words, and um, maybe encourage your uh, students uh, that they can see more that it's just uh, written. Thank you very much for all your comments. I'm very sorry that it's just one hour. First of all, I thought that I will have not enough I will have plenty of time, but uh, I won't. So where it is possible to teach people to read is a vexed question. If you don't know the word vexed, please Google it on or spot it or do it. But we believe we can help uh, them to learn. So this is the reference to the book. Uh, thank you. My name is Martin. I work for Bright House and also for Macmillan. And this is something that you've been all waiting for. So now I'm going to hand the word to Grzegorz. Thank you very much for everybody, almost 500 people. I'm super excited and uh, super happy. And hope to see you next week in uh, Estonia. I will be doing the tour with uh, Macmillan Posca. So I'm very excited and super, okay. really super Thank you super very much, Martin. Lots happy. of okay. inputs. Uh, we are going to...